The Twin Cities are celebrating a dubious anniversary this week. 25 years ago, Minneapolis and St. Paul decided that good fences make good neighbors. The result of this policy is the subject of tonight's first story about our monument to civic rivalry and social prejudice. In a word, the wall. It is a tale of two cities filled with all the power and pathos of a Dickens epic played against a backdrop of fear, ignorance, and sheer pettiness. Two prosperous cities, joined by a common geography, history, and culture, now divided by a looming, menacing wall. It's funny how we take this wall for granted, this pine curtain, this wooden... But it is our duty to question the value of such a stilted edifice to civic rivalry. The time has come when we can no longer afford to ignore it, pass it off as a local embarrassment. And on the 25th anniversary of its construction, it is the duty of this humble journalist to bring the wall out of the closet. You know, it's a case of simple jealousy. That's all it is. That's why they built that wall be between the cities, because they knew we were getting bigger, and they already knew we were better. St. Paul City Council yeah, President your, Vic Tedesco uh, sees the wall as a symbol of St. Paul's dynamic and growth and prestige. Why else did they build that thing? They're clearly afraid of us. They're Minneapolis is not afraid of anything. That wall has St. Paul written all over it. Minneapolis Council Person Barbara Carlson sees the wall as a St. Paul phenomenon. St. Paul has always been envious of our growth, and I don't blame them. When people think of the Twin Cities, they say Minneapolis first, St. Paul second. That's the kind of bull you'd expect from a megalomaniac like Barbara. Megalomaniac? Well, let me tell you something. I would rather be a megalomaniac from Minneapolis than a council person from that wimpy little town. From the smoldering embers of this bonfire of jealousy arose a wall of frozen hate. From Rosedale in the north to Fort Snelling in the south, a pine curtain has descended upon us. It is a triumph of modern technology. Over 22 miles long, it rises and falls with the contours of the land. It cuts right through neighborhoods like the scalpel of a drunken surgeon, bisecting neighbors, isolating friends. Over 65 billion board feet of pine, enough timber to build an attractive three-door stereo component shelf unit with convenient cassette storage rack for every man, woman, and child in North America. But is it only a wall? To find the answer to that question, you have to talk to people who live in and on both sides of the wall every day. Spend a moment listening to them. Sip some coffee and savor their stories about the wall and wall life. Perhaps enjoy a simple crumpet while you listen. Or maybe an apple-filled Danish with that delicious white frosting and a smattering of slivered almonds. Oh, here, here we go. Yeah. Pardon me. All right, so what's the bottom line here, Norma? Bottom line. You know, what, what's, what's the lowdown? What's, what's, what's the rue here? Rue? Isn't that a mixture of uh, butter and flour? You know, what I'm saying is, you know, when you have a, a gravy or a sauce or perhaps a, a gravy, and you boil everything away, you reduce it. So what's left for Norma? I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Every day, commodity broker Norma Johnson leaves her one-bedroom townhome in fashionable Kenwood for her job in St. Paul. This trip requires that she crosses the wall twice every day. Sure, I probably go through a lot more pantyhose than most women, but I feel physically stronger for it. I realize it may be breaking the law, but I don't consider it that way. I'm just a commuter like anyone else. Hey, it ain't really, ain't a wall. It's more like a sieve. I can tell you right now, they could give us five times the manpower. We still couldn't get 10% of what's coming through this wall. Ed Gums has been watching these crossings happen every day for the last 12 years. It's his job. Wait, right down here. Right down here, you see? But if I had During our interview with Mr. Right Gums, our cameras curious. captured an actual crossing by more than 20 young professionals. In the business, yeah, they're right. known as wall crossers. All right, freeze! It's a law that, uh, I shouldn't be saying this, but it's a law that I don't agree with sometimes. But 
But they got families, you know, and, and, and I got families, and they got families, and their families got relations, and, you know, and they, they got kids to feed, you know. I got kids, too, you know, and it's, uh, they're people. Come on, let's go, let's go. Roundups like this are a dime a dozen. No one ends up getting charged. Their IDs are checked, and then they're put on MTC buses, like so many cattle, and driven back across the border. Hey, pick up that slack there! If you prefer, you can always get someone to smuggle you across for a price. On the streets, he's known as a jackass. Sir, I take him across. Lots of them. 20 a day sometimes. We'll call him Bill. We've concealed his identity and disguised his voice. So what's it like, this life of a jackass? It's not jackass, it's jackal, you jerk. Oh, I'm really sorry. So, so you'll take anyone across? Anyone. For a price? For a price. How much? D generally a hundred bucks. A hundred dollars? That's the going rate. Here's my hundred bucks. I want to go across. For you, it's 150. Why 150 for me? Because you called me jackass. After stopping by my electronic teller, we began the frightening ordeal of crossing the border. 150, okay, there's your damn money. Okay, get in. In the trunk? Do you want to get across or not? Well, that's why I bought this great disguise. You look stupid. Now get in and shut up. Okay. Hope there's enough room in here. There's plenty of room. What a dork. I'm stuffed in a smelly car truck now, and we're underway. Oh, something hit me in the head. Hey, watch it. Oh, sorry. Who are you? Uh, John Smith. Oh, well, nice to meet you, John. I'm uh, Mike Jones. You know, if it weren't for that elephant nose, I swear you're Bob Bag of Donuts for 15 minutes. <laughs> well, that's very flattering. <laughs> Imagine me, a top-notch TV journalist. No, sorry, I'm just Mike Jones. Say, could you guys can it? Do you want to get across the border or not? Well, who the heck else is in here? I am. Me too. Get me in. Ow! Right here, get out. You're here? We're in the middle of nowhere. Hey, St. Paul, now beat it. How am I supposed to get anywhere? You got all my money. Luck, Not everybody can afford the money and risks involved in crossing the wall every day. But the airwaves are still free, and ideas know no boundaries. Hello, Minneapolis. This is Radio Free St. Paul. The propaganda war is a continual one. Radio Free St. Paul operates 24 hours a day. Rise up now and sing along. Oh, St. Paul, your big sails ever shine. Oh, Not to be outdone, Minneapolis has its own spokesperson. Ciao, St. Paul. This is Minneapolis Mini calling. Time now for the Urban Home Buddy Show. Brought to you live from the Universal Theater in downtown Minneapolis. This portion of the Urban Home Buddy is brought to you by Jack's Butterfish Sushi. Voracious, they're great. And by Dwayne's Pretty Good Auto Supply, where you can get Cadillac parts at Pontiac prices. And that's the news from Lake of the Isles, where the folks are rich and their children are spoiled rotten. Is this wall a permanent feature of our landscape? Have we walled up our minds the same way we've split up our cities? If anyone can add insight and perspective to this dilemma, it's St. Paul Pioneer Press and Dispatch columnist Nick Coleman. I think of myself as one of the first true twin citizens of Minnesota, a person who is at, you know, at ease in one city as well as the other, and, and that's not true for most people. When I... Nick Coleman is a columnist, a Twin Cities household name, and a wall crosser. It's kind of comforting to have that, that wall there. It's, it's sort of like the intercourse between the two cities is sort of protected by that wall. It's, it's what I would call safe intercourse between Minneapolis and St. Paul. The wall kind of allows each city to have its own private space, you know, I mean, it's do its own thing and, and still, you know, you know, it's just kind of like an open marriage, I suppose. It's, it's uh, to let St. Paul be St. Paul yeah, and yet let Minneapolis... You know, let Minneapolis try to be whatever it wants for a while and, you know, knowing that in the morning it's probably going to be there still. In the end, there remains Minneapolis, St. Paul, and the wall. I dare them to take down that wall they put up. I dare them to look over here and see what they're missing. In fact, I double dare them. Well, Barbara, I'm rubber, you're glue. Whatever you say bounces off of me, 
but sticks to you, honey.